So my point to this video is you need to put yourself out there and it is hard. That's why so many people aren't doing it. It's difficult. In this video, I want to talk to you about what it's really like to be a software engineer or a software engineer in developer relations, which is where we're all going to, really. If you want to stand out from the crowd, you need to put yourself out there on social media, blog posts, GitHub, open source. Again, it's all very social. You've got to go to tech events, network. So if you want to stand out, get the job that you want, you don't only have to be good at the coding at what you do, or around coding if you're a designer, UX, business analyst. But in addition to that, you need to be in relations. I really enjoy being a DevRel engineer. I do, I get to code, I get to share my learnings with people. And I was doing this long before DevRel became this really popular term and really exciting. From my YouTube videos, my social media accounts, the photos I take, the video clips I take of people, it is really exciting. And you see all the best parts, you see all the glamorous parts. You can see all the hard work behind the scenes. So I want to tell you a bit more about that. When I go to events, I need to take all my equipment. There's a lot of bags to carry around to get through security if I'm traveling abroad. And for me to look after, I don't want to break it because it's expensive. It takes time to charge all the batteries. I probably have about 30 batteries. Again, another problem for uh, going through security. I have batteries for cameras. Yes, S. I probably have four cameras with me. And they have their spare batteries. Then I have an audio mixer they have their batteries, and they have cordless microphones, they have their batteries. I have cordless lav mics, they have their batteries. I have portable lights, they have their batteries. I've got lenses to take for different cameras, tripods. Oh, there's so much, memory cards. So before I use this equipment, I need to make sure it's all charged up. I need to pack it and then lug it with me wherever I'm going. And then uh, when I arrive in an event, I need to set it all up, make sure I keep an eye on all the equipment, make sure nothing Gets, goes missing, either I've put it somewhere and I forget I've left it there. And then, once the event finishes, I need to pack it all up. I need to take it back to my hotel room if it's a more than one day event, or head back home. If it's a hotel room, I need to copy all the memory cards off the cameras, audio recorders, and put them onto a RAID hard disk, because I don't want to lose that content for that day. And then I need to have all the chargers with me, if it's more than a one day event, to charge all the equipment overnight. And then while it's charging, I've copied all the files from the audio, the four cameras, onto say an external hard drive, a RAID hard drive. Then I need to catalog it. I need to remember the best parts that I want to use. What was A roll? What was B roll? Which audio track for which person? The more cataloging I can do at the time, the better. And then the next day, you do it again. And then once it's over, the conference or the event, the hackathon, I need to come home, I need to transfer all those external hard drives to my main hard drives so either I can upload for my awesome video editor or I can edit myself usually both because usually my video editor does the longer more involved editing and then I like to take some snippets really quickly jump on those hashtags get some photos out there and reach out to a lot of the people that I met. It's actually really good having all the camera equipment with me although it scares some people also some people come over and chat I find that the more people that kind of come over and chat about cameras or what I'm doing or the t-shirt I'm wearing, be it hug a developer or YouTube t-shirt, then other people want to come over and see what's going on. So it's kind of a bit like a restaurant. If a restaurant's empty, then no one wants to go eat there. But if a restaurant's busy, people want to know what's going on. So that's the whole DevRel side. And then once everything is edited, I've got these files I need to upload to YouTube then I need to make sure it has a good title, a thumbnail, a description, the tags. And then I usually take the audio from the video, make it into a podcast. Again, that needs a title, a thumbnail, and various tags. These need to be shared on socials. And then also what I like to do is then get the video then transcribed and then put it into a blog post and then put a link to the podcast, a link to the video on the blog post, all for SEO, all driving traffic towards my YouTube channel and my website. So I have so much respect for all the other DevRels out there, people who work for awesome companies where they have a whole DevRel team to support each other. 
like Kiwi.com, I know they have four or five, if not even more, DevRel team members. And then you've got GitHub, Microsoft, Ably, who I've recently met, Twilio. They all have awesome DevRel teams that really want to help the community. Actually, a job post came up recently, I think at Ably, and it was looking for head of DevRel. I think this is my ideal job because it allows me to help people who are helping others, which I love so much. I love to help people, but if I can help people that help people, I can again scale so much more, which is why this YouTube channel was great for me because it allowed me to share the events I go to, my experience, my knowledge with you. So that's the DevRel side, but then I'm doing that on most days. I try and document most days. Even if I'm having a private business meeting, I try and time-lapse. There's no audio and nothing secure is shared. I try to time-lapse the meeting to give you a better understanding of what it's like to be a software engineer. Because it's not just about the coding. I have to write documentation, I have to have meetings with clients, meetings with other people in the team, be it other coders, be it business analysts, designers, UX, accessibility, the list goes on. I love that and it's really interesting, but it is hard work. It's not all glamorous and bells and whistles that you see on YouTube. I'm not trying to put you off. I really want you to accelerate your career and the only way to do that is to put yourself out there and not try and think of it as create content, but try and think of it as document what you're doing. We're learning every day, everyone is. But if you share it and allow people to learn what you're learning, be it from a mistake or from something you've achieved, then people will gravitate towards you and want to follow you and want to find out more. I love getting messages when people say, what events are you going to? Because I'd like to join you in Europe or the US or wherever it is. And I really enjoy that, that means a lot. I don't think that I've got fans, I think that I'm part of the community and people see me as one of them. Yes, I'm confident enough now to go speak to anybody, to go jump on stage and share some information. If you want to give a talk and you're a bit nervous and you want someone to be on stage with you to give you that support, just let me know. I'll gladly come to an event, be on stage with you. I can keep quiet and if you get a difficult question, I can jump in and take the difficult question. Even if I can't answer it, I'll just say I don't know and we'll get back to them. Or if you want me to trip up and make everyone laugh just to kind of break that ice and then you can, uh, now I've embarrassed myself on stage, then you'd look cool no matter what you do, then I'm happy to do that for you as well. Just let me know. So I have two typical days generally, ignoring the going to of conferences and uh, hackathons and trips around the world, I have two typical days. I have one where I go to London for meetings with my clients, with the rest of the team. And I usually do that one to two days a week. The other three to four days, I'm at home in my awesome home office, which you've seen before. You've seen my lovely setup. I love being in my home office. I have my computer set up over there with all my screens. I have my studio here. Also behind you, I have a magnetic whiteboard wall, which I love just drawing, making notes putting magnetic post-its all over the place, and I really, really enjoy that. I feel very creative. So one day I'd love to replicate my home studio, my home office, or what I call it, my home command center, into an office in London where I can invite you and everyone else to come take part, be creative on the whiteboard wall, record some more videos, or edit a video, or code some open source code on the awesome computer system. I'm working towards that, so hopefully I have some good news for you later on this year. In addition to my awesome home office, the reason why I love working from home is going to London, I have to drive for 15 minutes. It doesn't sound much, but they're gonna find parking and that's another 15, 20 minutes depending on how busy it is. And then I need to wait for a train, catch a train. And the train's only 30 minutes, but with the weather we have in the UK, there's always rain on the track, snow on the track, it's too cold, it's too hot. There's always some BS excuse. Basically, the train system's out of date and the 30 minutes can easily go to one hour, if not at all, as in too much has been canceled. And then once I get to Waterloo in London, I then also need to take the tube to wherever I'm going. So I need to allow two hours to get to my meeting from door to door, from home to the office. So it's two hours going in and two hours going out. It's four hours a day where I could be at home doing open source code, recording more videos for you. And I do have so many ideas of videos I want to record for you, like GitHub Actions. I mean, just it's so beautiful and elegant the way they've done GitHub Actions that you can make your project with a click of a button have a CI, have its continuous integration to run even just the simplest command like a linter or something like that. The great thing about that is you start getting benefit immediately within seconds. And I literally mean that. But there's a whole other discussion and I'll do a video on that soon. If you want to upskill your coding skills and everything around your coding skills so you can get the job 
and money that you deserve. If you want to join me at hackathons, conferences and meetups around the world, don't forget to subscribe to my channel below and leave a comment. Let me know what stage you're at in your career and let me know what you want to achieve next. What's your goal for 2020? I'd be really interested to know and let's see how I can help you achieve that. So my point to this video is you need to put yourself out there. And it is hard. That's why so many people aren't doing it. It's difficult because people are nervous about what the people, other people are going to say. If they tweet or share a picture, an Instagram post, a LinkedIn post, whatever it is, if they share something out there in the wild, a comment on a GitHub pull request, a comment on Stack Overflow, people are nervous what other people are going to say. And I just say, forget them. It's your opinion and you're entitled to it. As long as you're not rude, political, I know you won't be, then put your comment and your thoughts out there because it will only benefit someone else and you. It can benefit you because you'll learn by getting involved in the conversation. You'll see what other people come back with and you'll think about more about how to articulate what you're thinking. And that will help you next time you're in a meeting or in a discussion and a similar sort of topic comes up, you would have already thought through it. So therefore you can put a stronger argument, more clearer picture together for the other person. And that's really important. So do put yourself out there. Being in front of the camera, I know it's really hard. It is, it took me practice. If you go back to my earliest videos, please don't, they are awful. And I still have loads of room for improvement. But put yourself out there. Don't worry about what people will say because forget them. I've had some trolls before and other people in the community, if they trust you, if they believe in what you say historically, then they're gonna come to your defense. They're gonna stand up, they're gonna stand with you. Nothing better than going to an event and people saying, hey, I really liked your post or your video or whatever it was that you wrote the other week or the other month. And I love that. I mean, I even get on a plane now and I had someone tap me on the shoulder and said, I really enjoyed your video. And I love that. And then we just spend the whole journey of our laptops geeking out, recording a few videos. I should record more of those. Usually we end up geeking out. I completely forget to get the camera out and record. I always have the camera with me, so I should just record. But I forget, I need to get better at that. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see. I'm always interested in feedback. I don't get a lot of comments on my video, but I do get a lot of thumbs up and a lot of views. So please do comment below. It will help me so much because I'll understand more about what you want to see. I am documenting my journey all the time, the events I go to, as I mentioned. However, I can do content creation. I can create content for you. There is a GitHub Actions coming soon. I have been thinking about doing some Angular ones. I might do that on my other channel, Code Mortals, where we do more hands-on coding and more live streaming. If there's anything I can help you with in your career or in your learning, leave a comment, let me know, and I'll do my best to help you. I will definitely reply. 